let's find a good pattern. How about cool, curvy patchwork patterns? Oh, see here, that one looks really good. Let's make a curved log cabin. Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a curved log cabin. So this is one I made from some scraps we had here in the shop. And you can see it has kind of a round look to it, but it's not because the pieces are curved, it's just because the pieces are cut from different widths. So let me show you some pieces here. On this sample, I've got skinny, dark brown pieces. It's kind of hard to see them because I used all the same fabric for every piece. And I've got fatter orange fabrics. So I've cut a new selection here, and you can see we've got some skinny light pieces, and then we've got some fatter dark pieces. So when we sew these together, that's going to give this round effect. So it's really easy to sew. It's just as easy as your regular log cabin to sew. It just has a little more numbers and math when you cut it out. But we've done all that math for you and we have the numbers on our website. I have all my cut pieces here, but when I look at this, it's really hard to tell what order to sew them in. So I'm gonna put them kind of in the shape of what the log cabin is gonna look like. So we're starting with the center square. We're putting on two darks and then two lights and then two darks, two lights, two darks, and finishing with two lights. Now the pieces won't fit exactly even if I squish them together because there's seam allowances added to everything. But this way I can at least pick them up in order when I sew because I'm going to chain piece. So I'm going to start with the outside and stack them up in order. And you can see I'm just going around backwards. So we're going to start with the center square and the first piece. And we are going to sew them all together using a quarter inch seam. I always chain piece my patchwork when I can. That means I'm going to leave this on the machine and I'm going to sew all these center pieces all in one long chain. I've snipped these apart. I'm going to stack them up and I'm going to turn them 90 degrees. Now I'm ready to sew the next piece on. So I'm going to open this up, finger press the seam towards the top. And the next piece will fit exactly on here. Stitch it with a quarter inch seam. And do that with all of the pieces. Now I'm just sewing four of the blocks right now. I'm not going to sew all of the blocks that I cut. But I just want to show you how to sew these blocks. apart and stack them up. And then turn it again 90 degrees. Open up. Light finger press open. Get you another another stack here. And it fits right on. Let me give you a few hints here. When you put your piece and match up the corners, you can give it a couple stitches. It, it anchors it, it acts like a pin. Then meet up your bottom corners down here and hold that. Now, see how these fabrics are not lined up? I'm gonna exaggerate how unlined up they are. Pull it here and then use this hand to straighten it up so the pieces match nicely. batik 
fabrics, it's a little hard to tell if they're right side up or right side down. But I know when I ironed the fabric, it was folded in half, so this piece is right side up, and I'm gonna wanna sew it right side down. So you'll see me, I'll flip that one, I'll leave that one the right way, I'll flip that one, I'll leave that one the right way. Then That way I know when I pick them up, they're gonna have the right side facing down. It's also good to separate them before you sew them because batiks, if you've ironed them really flat, they can stick together and you could possibly pick up two pieces and stitch them on here. You don't wanna do that. So this way I know they're all right side facing down. Sometimes with batiks, you can't tell what's the right side and what's the wrong side. In that case, it really doesn't matter if you have it facing the wrong way. So if you can't tell, it really doesn't matter. When you use quarter inch seams, and that's the amount you've added for your seam allowances, every piece is going to fit on exactly. So if you are stitching and you find that your logs are too long, it's because your seam allowances are slightly larger than a quarter inch. It's not that big a deal as long as you use the same seam allowance every time, but you will find the farther you go around the block, the longer the pieces will be. So just adjust next time you sew so you're making your seam allowance slightly shorter. See, my pieces are fitting exactly on because I'm using exactly the quarter inch seam allowance. Now these blocks are done, and at this point, I'm gonna take them over to the ironing board and give them a really good steam pressing. So since we finger pressed everything ahead of time, the seam allowances are all going out. So this is just a quick pressing to make sure they stay that way. Let's see if this is looking round. Perfect. Now all we're going to do is make this same four blocks three more times and I'm going to put these into a table runner. the whole runner top done here from the curved log cabin blocks and I put it on the long arm machine and now I've got it off. You can see the nice quilting on there. So here is one of the log cabin blocks. So we've got the bigger pieces here, skinnier ones here, and this skinny one on the outside is what makes it look like there's a border all the way around here. There's not a border, that's just part of the block. So this is the four that I stitched up and then I made the same thing three more times. In order to get the binding on, we need to trim off the extra batting and backing. So I'm gonna use my plastic ruler, put it right along the edge there and trim away all the extra. Now I'm gonna do the same thing along this long side. So I'm just going right along the edge. Sometimes you will trim a little teeny bit of the top off, but mainly you're just trying to get all the excess backing and batting off of there. But you want it nice and straight. I've selected a darker binding here. So I'm gonna use this for the binding. I like to cut my binding two and a half inches wide. I sew it in one big long piece and then I take it to the ironing board and steam press it really flat. So this is gonna go all around the edges and I think that's gonna finish it really nicely. We're gonna start sewing the binding on a couple inches from the edge of the binding. We're gonna take a, leave a tail here and we're going to sew using about a quarter inch seam. And since we've got it cut nice and straight there, this will go on really easily. You 
you want to be careful that you don't pull this hard and stretch it as you sew it on. You just want to lay it right down on there. I'm coming to the corner here. Now I'm going to stop stitching a quarter inch from this edge. So I'm going to make a little line with my fingernail there and I'm going to stitch to that spot and then I'm going to back tack. So I'm going to leave the needle down and go backwards. Now I'm going to take this off of the machine. Now turn your runner or your quilt. Fold this at a 45 degree angle. It's heading, the fold is heading right to that corner. And then fold it down so the fold is even with the raw edge. And now you can feel where it's folded back there. We're making a little flap here so that when we turn this to the back we can get a nice corner. So you see where I stopped stitching there? I'm going to start stitching in that same spot but along this line. So right at that spot right there. So I'm going to move it up here and put the needle in and do a little bit of back tack and then go down this way. coming to the last bit here. So this is our flap we started with. Lay this out real flat along the edge and lay this down along the edge and you want to cut this so you've got a half inch overlap because we're going to use a quarter inch seam. So we're going to do a half inch overlap. Cut that off. Now we're going to open up these two seams and I mean these folds and we're going to stitch this together there. So I'm going to take it off the machine here. Put these right sides together and stitch them with a quarter inch seam. I like to back tack this one a little. There we go. Now take this seam and press it open because you have less bulk that way. So just use your fingernails, press that seam open, and then refold it and give that a finger press right along there. See how it's laying nice and flat along the edge? So we're going to stitch that last little bit down now. Now we'll just take it off and trim up all these extra threads here. Now at this point we want to open up the binding here. We want this pulled away from the quilt hard so I'm going to draw my fingernail down. I'm pulling it away and then drawing my fingernail down that really hard to press it. And we're going to do this all the way around. You can't get all the way into the corners, but you can get close. So just go close to the corner, turn it, open it, get as close as you can, and then pull that. When you come to a seam in your binding, let me see if I can find one here, you have to give it some extra pressing because there's slightly more bulk. So here's one of the seams. So I'm just going to make sure that's really open and pressed. Keep going all the way around. Then we are going to fold our binding to the back. I like to stitch the last row of sewing here on the machine. You can turn this back like this and you can whip stitch it by hand for a nice, neat, invisible look. I find that it's much quicker and much more secure to fold it to the back and then stitch from the top and I'm going to stitch right in the ditch here. So that stitching won't show from the top at all. 
but on the back side you'll have a little stitching line near the edge. So make sure you've got fabric or thread that coordinates with the top here on the top of your machine and one that is coordinating with the binding on your bobbin. Doesn't matter where you start, anywhere along one side. You can pin this or clip it if you like. I just find it folds really neatly over the edge and we'll be catching about an eighth of an inch on the back side there. And just go all the way around and I'll show you what to do in the corners. I'm coming to the corner now. So I am going to turn this to the back side, put this binding down smoothly over this side and feed it towards the corner and we're going to get a 45 degree fold right there and I'm going to put my fingernail right where my stitching was for sewing the binding on and I'm going to turn this to the back side right there. So now we're going to get a 45 degree fold there and a 45 degree fold there. Now if it's not perfect, like mine isn't perfect right there, you can fold a little more under and if you fold too much under you can take a straight pin and just feed it back a little bit so you've got those corners there just meeting. Now we're going to just hold that firmly and stitch. Pivot when you get to the corner and make sure you're holding enough of this back so when you turn it stays neat. So now that's what we want is that nice fold there and the same nice fold heading right to the point on the corner there. We've got the whole runner finished and bound. These are the fabrics that we cut this from. These are all batiks. So remember, wider strips, narrower strips. We will have all of these sizes and directions for making this runner as a free download on our website. It's really fun to make. I, I like to quilt the table runners with small quilting, so there's, it's very dense because I want it to lay nice and flat on the table. Now, if you have a request for a quilt pattern that you would like to see us make, be sure to tell us that in the comments and we will try to make it. We haven't made all the quilt patterns yet, but we're gonna give it a try. Thanks for watching.